Please. It's Psychic Bob. Woo! Here we are. It's 5 p.m. What's that saying? It's 5 p.m. somewhere in the world. Time for a martini. <laughs> well, here we are Sunday night, and I know you guys have been excited as I have been. Look who's sitting over here next to me. We got my, my, my long-lost brother, Mark Patterson. You want to say hi, Mark? Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here. It's an honor to be on my brother's show today. Thank you, Bobby, for having me. I do appreciate it, and I look forward to uh, learning what all you do here and talking to everyone here. Yay! <laughs> you know, guys, I've been pulling his arm for like the last year to get him on here. Finally, he got up the courage. <laughs> now, Ray, you know, Mark, I'm just glad you're here. And, you know, um, guys, before we get into talking to Mark, um, just got a few quick things I want to cover with you, okay? We got some wonderful things going on here at Spirit Channel this upcoming week. First of all, before we get into that, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who came up to yesterday's videos. We had two videos. We had the introducing of my brother Mark here, and we also had um, our spiritualist class and seance. Now, I got that out a little late last night because I was tied up with readings. But if you did not see yesterday's class, go see it because, you know, the spirit guides were channeling through. It was a wonderful experience. We've been working on studying Sylvia Brown's book, Mystical Traveler. So uh, we covered some more of that. We're working on the eight keys, golden keys of knowledge in this book. And um, if you haven't seen yesterday's video, make sure to go back and see that, okay? And if you can, give me a thumbs up, like it, favorite Share it, share it with your friends, put it on your Facebook, you know, help tell YouTube you want Psychic Bob here, okay? And uh, thank you for your support. So uh, anyways, without further ado, here is my brother, Mark. And, uh, you know, Mark, I'm just glad you're here today because, you know, it's, well, it's been a long time that I want you to come on here. And, you know, I always talk about you. I always tell people, I have a great brother out in New Mexico. And uh, your name has come up a few times actually on my uh, UFO Friday show because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with UFOs out where you live, isn't there? There is. There's a lot of, a lot of UFO activity around uh, New Mexico. You know, and UFO, UFOs aren't the only things. That whole state, I think, is a paranormal magnet state. I really do. And, you know, I've been out there and, you know, Mark actually took me uh, to Roswell, New Mexico. Didn't we? We went out there, didn't we, Mark? That was a long trip. It was. We drove all the way across the state, but boy, we had fun. And, uh, you know, I really recommend it. You know, I got to tell you guys, you know, you're all always writing me asking about UFOs. And I can tell you that, you know, when I was out there, I went out into the town. Mark and I went out and talked to the locals. And I would literally walk up to people on the street and say, is this real? You know, do you guys really see stuff? And people said to me all the time, we do. We see stuff here, didn't they, Mark? They did. It was, uh, it was amazing. And you ought to tell a little bit about while we were in the museum. Oh, gosh. Yes. Well, what's that? What? what? The guys in black. Oh, yeah. Well, we had some really interesting experiences. You know, we went to the Roswell Museum. And uh, there were people milling around who I'm pretty sure were uh, the men in black, government agents watching. And the guy who gave the lecture that day in the tour, he told me he was being monitored. And I said, hmm, well, I tell you, there's stuff going on out there, you know, there really is, you know. Hey, I want to give give a few shout outs here. Uh, hold on a second. I'm sorry, guys. I forgot to say hello to all you. Gail's here. Shiva Bakhtan's here. Exploring for Life is here. Nigella for me is here. Hi, Nigella. Gav Hines is here from London. Antoine LaVey's here. Constant Tripper. Yay. Nigella says, I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We definitely have strange things in the sky. I always, oops, it just went by. Hold on. I always see them over the Sandia Mountains, which are in my backyard. Oh, wow. Okay, so Nigella, it sounds like you, you're you in the hot spot as well. Mark, you're, you used to live near the Sandias, or don't you live near? Are you, no, I used, to, I used to live in the heights off of uh, San Pedro. Not okay. sure Nigella knows where that is. 
Well, there you go. See, isn't that interesting? Well, Nigella, I'm glad you can confirm it. Um, you know, one of the phenomena, Mark, that I saw when I was out there was vertical lightning. Do you guys still have that? Absolutely. See, I have a theory about that. I was saying to my tubies the other week, I said, I've seen vertical lightning. And I think that it has some connection with underground alien bases. That's my theory. Well, whether that can be proven or not, it's here or there, but I'm going to put it out there, you know? And uh, I suspect that you've had some suspicions about underground bases yourself. I cannot speak of that. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Uh, Constant Tripper says, I saw a UFO in County Durham, UK. You know, Constant, I got to tell you, I used to live up in that part of England. I was up in um, Darlington in County Durham. So I never did see UFOs but when I was there, but I, I love that you're from that area. So um, anyways, I'm glad you're here. Anyways, you guys have been wanting to get to know Mark. And I'm glad he's here. And I thought uh, maybe we'd tell you a little bit about our story, how we, uh, you know, came to, to get to know each other. Um, it's an interesting story. And Mark, feel free to fill in wherever I leave out details. But sure. Mark and I met back in, it was over 93, 94. 93. 93. And um, anyways, we had both been adopted. Uh, we came from a family. Uh, and there was a lot of challenges in that family, our birth family. And we were basically um, put in foster homes and then adopted by our foster families. And back in those days, see, the, um, the records were sealed. And so nobody could know about anybody. So we really didn't know about each other uh, until several years later. My parents told me, well, we think you have siblings, but they never gave us details. And I think your parents are kind of told the same thing. There might be people, but we don't know anything. And, you know, so we grew up in different homes. But when we were in our 20s, I would think I was about 25 then, um, you know, we were contacted by other family members who wanted to, to connect with us. And lo and behold, we ended up meeting. And I tell you, it was a wonderful experience, you know, because – um, when you're an adoptive person, you sometimes wonder, you know, wonder about your past. Um, I mean, I didn't spend a lot of time obsessing about it, but you, you wonder once in a while. What do you think, Mark? Did you ever wonder about it? Absolutely. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I wasn't obsessed with it, but it's definitely something that I think anybody who's been through um, life that way wonders about it. Yeah. And so we ended up getting to meet and you know, I won't go into all the long story details, but you know, he's been my brother. Well, he's been my brother all my life, but been actively known as my brother for the last 25 years now. And that's amazing. That's hard. It, is, it, it seems like yesterday, you know, it was like 1993 and it's almost 2020 almost. So I say 27 years. Wow. That's hard to believe, isn't it? It is. That's, yeah. Wow. I don't know where I don't know where the, I don't know where the years go. You know, but you know what? What's really interesting is that over the years, you know, I've and you guys have heard me say this. I've always believed that my psychic abilities have a genetic component, because when we met our birth mother, she told me many stories about her having visions of angels and spirit guides and feeling, you know, presences around her. And I just think it's very interesting, you know, and I don't know if you know this, Mark, but on our father's side, you know, I met, I don't think you met one of our great aunts, Mabel. Did you ever meet her? Yes, I did. You did meet me? Okay, I couldn't remember. It's been a long time. She but, the wanted to move out to New Mexico. That's right. Yeah. She wanted to move out there. And um, she was also very psychic and she told me about some of her psychic experiences. So it seems that this ability that, that, um, the psyche ability comes actually from both sides of our family. And, you know, I've always said, now you've heard me say that my brother is very gifted psychically. Now he'll sit and deny it, but you, Mark, you, you know, you've had some mystical experiences, haven't you? I have. Mm -hmm. And you know, out where you are, you know, you can connect with the, the native American people and the spirits there. Correct. 
Mm -hmm. Tell me about one of your mystical experiences. Maybe they'd like to hear. Maybe, you know, you want to share something you've done or experienced that's mystical. Well, uh, I think the one thing that stands out in my mind more than anything was um, I went to a sweat. I was invited by a friend of a local tribe to go to one of the sweats, and um, which is a real honor. They don't just invite anybody mm -hmm. into those. And um, after the sweat that night, I came home. I cleaned the mud off of me. And anybody that's been in sweat knows what I'm talking about. But um, I went to bed as normal, a little bit later than normal. But um, I woke up, and you now you wake up and you just you feel like some if somebody's in the room, you feel that presence. Oh yeah. And I woke up and I felt this presence. Wow. And I kid you not, I kid everybody not. I opened my eyes and there was this, what looked like a, now granted it was dark, okay. And um, so all I could see was the outline, but it was the outline of probably about a seven foot Native American man standing over me. Wow. And I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> but uh, I said, okay, this isn't real. I'm dreaming, you know, that whole thing. Um, and he was there probably a good, oh, I don't know, five minutes. It seemed like, a, of course, a half hour. But, um, and then it was gone. But I felt like he was standing there watching over me, almost trying to relay something to me that I was being watched. I was being, but it was protected. It was like I was being protected. Um, it was fascinating. That's the that's the one thing that I can I can definitely um, relay as a as a, a true spiritual. Um, happening. Mm. Oh, I believe it. You know, this is so interesting because um, one of um, my favorite artists, I think you like him too, Jim Morrison. You know, I'm talking oh, about Jim Morrison. Morrison. Jim Morrison throughout his life claimed that he had a Native American spirit that guided him and protected him. And he said whenever he would be doing concerts, sometimes he would see this spirit like standing on the stage near him and like shaking his rattle or just being present. And see, I think that the native spirits um, are guiding people still. And I think that you had a, you know, that was one of your spirit guides really, you know? And when you went to New Mexico, you know, you were connecting with, um, with him, you know, you it's like that energy of the land, your soul connection, it, it, you know, working with the Native Americans at the Sweat Lodge, it's like you got your connection with your guide there, you know. I think that's amazing, absolutely amazing, you know. I love that, you know. I, I just think that's that's absolutely fascinating. we got some commentary. People, people are saying, incredible, Mark. Catherine M says, incredible. Sarah J, great story, Mark. Uh, Bonnie Daly says, and you'll never forget that. Wow. T. Rose Lover says, I loved Jim Morrison. You know, um, thank you guys. Yeah, Mark, yeah, Gav Hines is amazed. B. LeClaire says, wow, thanks for sharing that, Mark. Uh, for those of you who are writing questions, um, I will be the answer. We're going to do psychic readings in just a little while. So hold your questions. We will get to that, you know. Um, Heidi Hobson just wrote, hi, Mark. Uh, when you were talking, the candle was going nuts, flickering. Felt a pain in my ear as well. Lots of activity here. All right. So that channel of energy is opening, you know. Um, Billy Mayer has a question. says, Mark, have you ever met aliens? No, I have not. No. I've never met aliens like in the flesh, but I tell you, I know they're amongst us. You know, you guys know I've always said the Pleiadians are already on Earth, and they look just like us. They're walking around. We never know them from, from Adam. So 
Um, but there are, there are aliens. A lot of you have written me and told me over the years how many of you have had experiences. And, you know, I think the interesting is that uh, New Mexico is one of these places, at least with my experience from visiting there, that it's the place where it all kind of comes together. The earth life, the spirit life, the alien life. It's like there's a convergence of energies there. That's the only way I can describe it. Would you agree with that, Mark? Absolutely. It's. Uh, I have never personally um, met any aliens. Um, I would love to. Don't get me wrong. But um, there's definitely an energy in the state, um, in the area. Um, I think even up in Colorado, you know, there's a lot of energy. But it is definitely, it seems, centered uh, here in New Mexico. Well, you know, this is interesting because um, I was recently on the Kelly Coffee Show. A lot of you know Kelly Coffee is a well-known psychic, and she just moved to Colorado, and she said it's just amazing the energy in that state. Now, I've not been to Colorado, but I've been to New Mexico, and I'll tell you, it's going to be hard for anything to top New Mexico's energy. <laughs> you know, um, very amazing, very amazing, and. You know, Mark, in your life, you've done a lot of travel. Um, you've been around the world. Mark, you want to tell a little bit about some of the places you've been in your life? Maybe you've had some other mystical places or places that inspired your soul journey. Well, you know, uh, really, I, I haven't necessarily been around the world. Um, well, I was in the I was active duty Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And well, thank I, you for your service to the country. Oh, you're welcome. It was an honor. Um, while I was in the service, I did do a Mediterranean tour, and we hit all of Europe. Um, not all of, well, we hit pretty much all of Europe. We went around the Mediterranean, hit uh, Spain, France, Portugal, um, Africa, um, you know, Israel. Um, and it was, uh, at the time, I was not really tuned into uh, the psychic world, if you will. Um, I was concentrated on my mission. So, um, but I'm sure that being all these places, I think if I had to say any place that really had an influence on me was, um, was Spain. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Setting off the coast of Spain and seeing the castles up on the bluffs. It was just beautiful bluffs, beautiful castles. It was just, it, that was majestical. It was absolutely Amazing. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? You know, that's so interesting you said because, you know, um, well, you know, I know Shirley MacLaine, the actress. Right. And Shirley MacLaine has often said, and, and she's also written in her books, that Spain is one of her favorite places. She said that she believes that ley lines that cross her, that whole country, just give a vibe to it. Like there's a power source there. There is. There really is. That's, that's one thing that, that um, there is, that's a good way to put it. There's an energy there that's unexplainable. Um, the other place that I was privileged, privileged enough to visit and actually work in for about a year was Hawaii. Um, we worked on the island of Kauai. I was doing some work with the Pacific Missile Range facility there then. And I was there about a year. And uh, that was a true honor. A lot of energy on the islands there also. Really, really it's a majestical place. Well, you know, you um, I remember your time in Hawaii. And uh, you brought back for me some beautiful uh, native Hawaiian beads, of the, the giant necklace of beads. They're like sacred beads for blessing and protection. I still have those. I've forgotten about them. Yeah. Cool. And um, you brought me a few things from Hawaii. And and. You know, I, I, I think there are definitely places on this earth that are just what I call psychic power centers. I think, you know, especially if you're developing or you're psychically sensitive, like going to these places will definitely enhance you, you know. I know that during my time in New Mexico, I, and I think I even told you this, but I said I feel like a hum or a vibration, like the whole, like you touch the soil out there and it's like an energy. And there's a lot of uh, crystalline uh, quartz and mica in the soil in New Mexico. And you, do you remember, Mark, you know, I got to tell you guys, <laughs> a 
Mark, you know, a little more athletic than Psyche Bob. But Psyche Bob, you know, want to keep up with his big brother. And Mark took me up to the top of one of Sandia's peaks on a big cable car. And I remember we got up there. And Mark said, let's run up. Let's go up higher, you know, because there were some other areas we're going to run. And I start running. All of a sudden, I'm like, <gasps> I can't breathe. <laughs> so, it's, it's the altitude up there. Oh, I tell you. You know, but even with that thin air, I'm telling you, the power is still there. But I'll never forget, like, experiencing what it's like not to have oxygen, you know. Living down here by the sea level where I live, um, you you know, you take it for granted. I tell you, I will never take oxygen for granted again. <laughs> That's right. I was the same way when I first moved out here. I uh, thought I'd go running up the Sandias and about halfway up, um, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's quite the feeling when you can't breathe. Yeah, a little scary, you know. In fact, Kelly Coffey told me since she's moved to Colorado, she's had to have an adjustment because of the oxygen oh, yeah. levels. It's been a little challenging for her, but she's getting used to it. But I think it definitely takes its toll on your body, you know. I'm just seeing what's going on here in the chat, you know. Okay, everybody's just talking about some cells. Yay. Uh, Andrew Harper writes, I've just returned from Spain. It has a strong oh. energy. Yeah, I agree so, you know. Um, oh, Billy Mayer says, Bob, who is the older brother? I don't know. Who's the older one? I think Mark is. <laughs> <laughs> By a couple years. We're close. We're only about a year and a half or not even a full two years apart. Close to two years, but not. I don't think it's a little less than two years. I'm 66. <laughs> Don't, uh, no, no, no. No, I, I mean, that's my birth year. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell people I'm 64. Uh, Margaret, I was 68. I was Jan January 68. Right. And you were what? September. 66. So just a little, about a year and a half, roughly. So we're close in age, you know. And um, yeah. So I, tell, I don't know where the years go. I can't believe I'm 51 now. You know, yeah, I just turned 53. <laughs> Isn't that something? And we met when we were in our 20s, you know. Yeah. Uh, Kathy Private says, We're listening to you, to you too, Bob. Oh, that's all right. You all talk amongst yourselves. I know you're listening in. Uh, thank you, though. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Catherine M said, What beautiful brothers. I'm proud to claim it. You know. <laughs> Can you see the chat, Mark? I cannot. That's what I was trying. I've clicked on it, but I can't see it. Uh, up at the top, it should say public or private. Click on public. It says private chat. I don't see public. Yeah, click on public. I don't see public. Okay, then click on that. Pri there should be two tabs, like one next to each other. Oh, live comments. That's it, live there comments. Okay, thank you. Now I can see that. Yeah, so, yeah, we are going to do readings in the, just a little while. So don't worry, guys. Uh, wait, Bob. Wait, what? Bob is 51. That's a well preserved dude right there. I <laughs> think do it. Well, you know, I always say, you know, between facelifts and hair dye, I'll never age. <laughs> you know, we got to be in Hollywood. You know, I've been on television, so, you know, I'm vain like that. My brother always picks on me. He no. said, You're always worried about your face moisturizer and your hair. Yeah, I know. I am. I haven't changed, have I, Mark? I'm still the same. <laughs> Mark looks good for his age, too, doesn't he? Huh? I'm telling you. Yeah, you do. You know, guys, I got to take a poll here. How many of y'all think he looks a little bit like Kevin Bacon or also Michael J. Fox? I think he looks like both of them a little bit. I've always thought that, you know. Anyways, let's hear, hear what you guys think. <laughs> Anyways, that's all right. They're worse people to be compared to, believe me. <laughs> uh, Angela Locke says... Um, are they telepathic with each other? You know, actually, I think we are because there have been times where, like, I'll call him and I'll say, I'm sitting there feeling like I got to call you. I'm like, I had to call you. So we do that sometimes. And sometimes when we call each other, we'll mention something and Bobby go, you know, I was just thinking that. I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah, we do. Oh, my God. That's an interesting link. Yeah, you know. He's a great brother, I'll tell you. You know, I remember, you know, it was a strange part. I remember the first day we met, and it was just like, 
I had this kind of weird experience, even though we had never, I mean, you have to remember, we were babies when we were taken away. I was just like six months old. Mark was like a year and a half or two years. So we didn't really have a conscious memory, but I remember seeing him feeling like, oh, I know him. Like it was just kind of this knowing. And um, I remember the first time he called me because he was coming up, we were organizing when we we're going to meet. And we got on the phone. We must have talked two hours, didn't we, Mark? Oh, easy. You know, and it was just, it was a lot of fun. So, you know. Tell them about walking to the mall in the snow. That was fascinating. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, Mark and I, I used to live next to this shopping mall. And it started to snow. And Mark said, oh, well, we can't go to this mall. It's going to be a snowstorm. I said, no, I literally live a block from the mall because you couldn't see it from my house. You literally go around a corner and there it is. So, we start walking to the mall. And we look back at our footprints. We see our footprints in the snow. It's just a light dust. And so we have the same foot, kind of the way our feet turn in our pattern of walking. It looks exactly alike. I think it was called we were both duck-footed. <laughs> Something like that. I think so. <laughs> you know, yay. Oh, uh, Angela Locke says, Mark looks like the actor Stephen Baldwin. Okay, I don't know him. I have to look him up. Okay. Wow, that's cool. Uh, Mark, what part of the military were you in? What uh, branch? Yeah, I think that's what they mean. The Marine Corps. It was, yes. It was the Marine Corps. Hold on. That was exploring for life. Thank you, Marine Corps. All right. Um, Sarah J., you really appreciate each other almost more than many siblings. Yeah, we, we you know, we... We don't take each other for granted. We're thankful for the connection. You know, and I, I remember when I met Mark and I thought, wow, think if I had gone my whole life and never met him. I would have missed out on a really cool dude. You know, now here he is part of my life. And, of course, his thought was something probably like, oh, no, an annoying little brother. <laughs> not hardly, not hardly. <laughs> but he does like to remind me I'm kind of spoiled, which I am. But he spoils me, too. You know, when I went to New Mexico, he was so nice. He took me everywhere. And he bought me souvenirs and treated me to dinners and drinks. And I lived good. <laughs> that dinner just gets you away from the martinis, gets you margarita. Oh, uh, yeah, margarita. <laughs> yeah, margarita's good. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. So, anyways, all right, guys. Well, you know, yeah, they said we're soul brothers. I agree. Um, Billy Mayer says, Mark, um, are there any other spiritual moments in your life that you want to share? Um, wow. That's, um, that's a big question. That is a big question. Um, well, um, probably meeting my biological family was one of the most, uh, spiritual moments of my life. Um, so other than that, I, you know, I, I, I'd have to think on that really. Um, but, but, um, that's probably the, the, the most spiritual moment of my life was meeting Bobby, uh, meeting my biological family. I, I think that was definitely up there on spiritual moments for sure. Cause I mean, you know, it's hard to put into words unless you've lived through that. But it's, it's a fascinating experience to meet people and to really know where you come from. It's no longer a mystery, and it's there. And, uh, you know, I, it was it's an amazing time, you know. Uh, you learn so much about who you are. What's really fascinating, and Mark, we've talked about this as well, is that, you know, um, nature versus nurture, you know. Like, for example, the way we walk, right? Well, we could say we were both raised to walk by our parents. They taught us how to walk. But really, in the end of the day, we have the exact same gait in our walking. So that's nature. No matter how much we were trained how to walk, and even Mark being in the Marine Corps learned how to walk. You know, they make you mark. Well, they would be upset if they saw that a duck, duck footed. <laughs> <laughs> but still, see, this is the mystery, you know? Because a lot of you, I know you've written to me, and you say, Psychic Bob, I feel I don't fit in with the world. I feel lost. And, you know, I always say, you know, if you're really a spiritual person, you're never really lost because there's so many of us here. And this is why I created this channel 
spiritual. So there's a gathering place for people to discover who they are in a safe place, you know? And so like Mark and I discovered our genetic, our biological heritage, you know, we're also still always discovering our spiritual heritage, you know? And so I invite all of you, you know, to think about that. You know, some of you, I know you've written to me, you've been raised in very terrible backgrounds and bad families. But, you know, as I've always told you, you don't have to be tied to that. You can choose how you want to be. You know, it's no secret, Mark, Mark will tell you the same. Some of our biological family uh, were challenged people. I'll just put it that way. Um, but we made choices not to be carrying on some of their patterns of behavior. And see, all of you have a choice you can choose. You know, and that's what I want you all to remember. You're, you know, nature versus nurture. Yes, nature has an element, but so does choice and all of that. And as free will spirit beings, we always get to choose. So you are not defined by your past. Okay, remember that. You agree with me, brother? I agree, 100%. All right, there you go. <laughs> uh, Billy Meyer writes, let's reclaim our sovereignty, Bob. See, that's the spirit. That's what I like. Very good, Billy. Um, yes, okay. Hold on, I can't see the, the chat here. It's going by here. Uh, Catherine M. writes, this channel makes me feel like I'm part of a big family. Thank oh. you, thank you, Bob. Well, you're welcome. Well, that's my goal here, you know. Um. You know, I, I say this, and I don't say this to sound negative, but at some point in everybody's life, you will feel like an orphan, whether you've been adopted or whether you have your family. There are moments in life where we feel like we're an orphan. And for spiritual people, I think that that feeling is sometimes a little more acute and a little more often than for a lot of non-spiritual people. Because when you are in touch with the soul, when you are dealing with those deep things, it sets you aside from a lot of the world that just rushes around and doesn't really think about deep things. So that's why spirit channels are, you always have a refuge to come and be with people. And now we got Mark here. So, you know, we probably have him back a few more times if he wants to join with us, you know. So anyways, um, well, anyways, guys, I thought, you know, um, uh, yeah, he's already answered that, Shadowlander. Uh, you'll have to watch it back. He just said, has Mark had any paranormal experiences? Yes, he has. So if you, he probably just tuned in a little late. If you, if you hadn't seen that, that's earlier in the show. Um, I won't make him repeat all that. But, uh, yeah, you know, Mark's very tuned in, you know. And, um, oh, thank you. Sarah J. writes, Bob, you're always here for uh, that need to feel connected to spirit feeling. Much gratitude. Well, much gratitude to you, Sarah. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Melanie Miller asks a good question. She says, Mark, do you have the same gifts as Bob? I'm going to let him answer that. I honestly do not know. Um, I've never practiced psychic work. Um, I sometimes have... Um, well, I've, I've uh, I won't say predicted things. I knew things were going to happen that that ha happened, and it shocked me when they did. It was like, hey, I almost saw that. So um, there is a some sort of energy there that an ability that may be hidden within me. Yeah. Well, he will. You know, he says he doesn't, but he, the only difference, really, and I and I say this in all honesty and sincerity, is that I was very fortunate to have the connection with some of the top psychics in the world who actually took the time to teach me and train me. Um, and I think Mark has a natural ability and we might let him test out. Some of you guys are brave tonight and he's feeling brave. We might let him help out on the readings. Would you guys like that? Well, you, how do you think about that, Mark? Um, that would be interesting. All right. <laughs> no pressure. Off I am. <laughs> We'll see. All right. Well, no pressure. You know, if it comes, it comes, you know. So, um, oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Gab says, my life and views have changed immensely. Oops, hold on. I just lost it. My life and views have changed immensely since finding Bob and Spirit Channel, all for the better. 
Thank you, Gab. I'm very honored by that. Uh, Constant Tripper says, oh, I'm like you, Mark. I see things in dreams and predict things. Is that cool? That is. That is. You know? I love it. Okay. <laughs> Jay Weber. Mark looks like Bob. If someone gave Bob a makeover so he could run for president. <laughs> I'm too much of a hippie to, to get my hair cut short and look normal. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah. You know, I people say we look alike. I don't know. I don't really, I've never really thought we look alike. You know, sometimes siblings look really alike, sometimes they don't. I don't know that we do. I have a yeah, I haven't thought that we looked that much alike, but I've got a friend in Virginia who saw Bobby on the Spirit Channel, and he said, my gosh, Bobby looks like you with uh, maybe 10 more pounds. <laughs> I could lose 10. If I lost 10, then we might look more alike. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's you know, siblings, uh, sometimes they look alike, sometimes they don't, but, you know. We definitely have a soul connection, and that's I think more important than what the, the physical looks like, you know. So, uh, anyways, yay! Well, I'm just glad you guys are here. So, I thought if you guys are feeling it, maybe we'll just do a few, do some readings, get the energy going. Let's let's all this do a meditation though to open the channel, okay. So this is an easy meditation. I want you to take your hands off your keyboards and just settle down and tune in, okay? So, Mark, this will be easy for you as well. I want you to join us. So we're going to just stop. We're just going to close our eyes for a moment. And as we close our eyes, let's just follow our breathing, just gently in and out. And as we follow our breathing, let's try to let go all the crazy tensions of the day and enter into that place of silence and peace within. And as we're breathing, I want you to visualize in your mind's eye to see floating above your head a brilliant ball of shining white light. It's floating about two feet over your head. I want you to see that light slowly descend now. Let it move down closer to you, closer to you. Now the light's touching the top of your head. Feel its gentle warmth and radiance. It's almost like a warm sun, a small sun right above your head. And let that sun pass in now through the top of your head. And as it enters, you feel its warmth and light flooding the top of your head. And let that light now descend and it's fully filling your head with a gentle glowing white light. It's like a cloud of luminous light. Let that light cloud just expand now. Let it flow down into the neck. Let it move down into the shoulders. And as that light is starting to soothe your shoulders, feel it just releasing all tension of the day. Let that light continue now to flow. Let it flow down each arm. It's like waterfalls of light flowing down to the hands and fingers. Let that light move down through your shoulder blades now. Let it move down to the lower back. Let that light bring in gentle, soothing, healing energy. Wherever there's tension in your body, let it just as it moves into it, gently relax it and warm it. Let the light move all down from the chest into the stomach. See and feel that light as it wraps around you like a gentle blanket of silk, soft and nurturing. Let that light continue to flow now. Let it move down through your hips down through your thighs, down to your knees. Let that amazing light just effortlessly glide through you and let it continue to bring in all of those balancing, healing energies. Let the light flow down through the shins and calves, down to the ankles and all the way down to the feet and toes. Now as all of us look within, let us realize now that we are now filled with this amazing and divine light from the top of our head all the way down to our feet. Remember that in this light, there is no fear. There is only peace, love, joy, and acceptance. This light is your connection to your higher self and it's your connection to your higher source. 
Now I'm going to be silent for just a brief moment. And during this time of silence, let us keep our eyes closed. Let's stay within and focus on this light. So now I'm going to be silent just for a moment while we do this. Very good. Now, we've been working in the spirit body, and I want us to slowly come back to the physical body. So let's start by moving our feet a little bit. Let's move our hands and fingers. Take some deep breaths, get the lungs going. Move your head, and when you're ready, I want you to come back. And when you return, you're gonna be alert, be refreshed, and hopefully be feeling good. And when you're back, you can open your eyes and you'll be fully present here. And when you're back and ready, everybody let me know. All right, we're coming back. All right, wonderful. All right, well, let's jump in. Fletcher, by the way, I hear him back here. My spirit guide's here, and he says hello to all of you. <laughs> all right, um, let's see here. Ryan Erard, um, do you see any spirits around me who hang out with me often? Thank you. You know, Ryan, as I'm walking into your frequency, I'm getting the voice of two different men I hear behind you here. Um, one of them gives me the name of Alfred. He says, I'm Alfred, but I don't think it's the guy that I show him, Alfred. It's a different Alfred. He said he can call me Al. So there's a spirit named Al around you. I also get another guy. It sounds like a female, actually. Um, and I keep hearing the name uh, Luis. So Al and Luis. And what's interesting, I keep seeing they're dressed in like 1930s style clothing. And uh, they said, they said, we're just coming from the seance. I think they were both psychics or attended spiritualist gatherings, but they're around you. And I keep hearing uh, Al says, he said, tell him he can hear the spirit. He's also asking me to tell you, Ryan, that um, you may start hearing music. I get the sense there could be some issues here around channeling or drawing in music of some sort. I hope that makes some sense to you. Uh, but I do pick both of them up, Al and Louise, and they're around you an awful lot. You also have an uncle around you. I believe it's actually a great uncle on your father's side. Maybe a grandfather's brother who I pick up in spirit around you. Um, and what's strange is I feel that he passed prematurely. Like he may have died. Um, like the words I want to say is before his time. Uh, but he's around you. And he's been a guardian for you for several years. Okay, so that's who I pick up around you, okay? Blessings to you. Thanks for your questions. Hope that helps. All right, Catherine M is here. Psyche Bob, any messages about my job or work? Thank you so much. You know, Catherine, I have to tell you, uh, I keep getting um, December. December is a transition point for you. I feel like there's an offer that comes around that time. It may be like a new job. I always feel like it's a word I want to say is promotion, like where you are. But I also get an outside offer. So it may be multiple offers. <clears throat> December's a transition time for you. Mark, do you want to see, do you see anything? Are you getting anything on that you want to throw in? Uh, not at this point. Okay, no. that's all right. Mark, I just want to let you know if you're getting something, I'm talking, feel free to jump in, okay? Because sometimes, you know, the spirit moves it'll just channel through and you're like, oh, I got to go with this. It's here. Okay. okay. Let's see. That's all right. Good. All right. Uh, Shivan Bhaktan. Hi, any messages for me? Thank you. You know, Shivan Bhaktan, I got to tell you, um, I'm getting a lot of purple and gold light around you right now. Uh, that tells me that you're opening psychically. I feel like your clairvoyance is picking up. I want you to watch because they keep showing dream activity here around you. I also get a lot of gold light around you, which means that people are starting to recognize your talent. Um, particularly, I feel like the end of this month, October, is a significant time around you because it looks like around that time that uh, people are kind of, the word I want to say is they're seeking out for your knowledge. Um, this may even be something that turns into like an offer of a job or some type of work that you're going to do based on some specific skills that you have. 
Um, you also have a gift of communication. I want you to focus on writing. Uh, I feel like you're going to write a book here in the next year or two. Um, so there's writing energy around you and expertise skill. So whatever your expertise at, that's what you want to put focus on, okay? But writing is part of that, okay? Anyways, hope that helps. Blessings to you. Good questions. All right. Um, Mark, anything you want to add on that? Um, no, I don't I I don't see anything right now. That, That's that okay. I'm going with what you're going with. Okay. Now yeah. feel free to jump in. Okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Bob or Mark, can any of you tell me the name of my spirit guide? So I can communicate on a more personal level. Thank you, Ruby. Uh, Ruby, I keep getting the name. Well, there's a few guides here, but one of them is a um, is an angel being around you. It's Metatron, uh, the Archangel Metatron's around you. He's one of your your large guiding guides. It's helping you with your life mission. I also get another name around you. It's a, um, a female. The name is Susie or Susan. And it's funny, she's dressed like a 1950s girl with a poodle skirt. I believe she crossed over in the 1950s. Uh, she was going to be an actress when she was alive. But she's guiding you now because I get the sense that you may do something down the road here connected to the arts, to theater, to the arts. And Susie's helping you. With that, I feel that you have a great gift of acting. I think you're a natural channel, and Susie's going to help you with connecting to that creative side of you. Metatron's working with you to, to do channeling of energy as well, and you may find that you end up doing some also some studies in psychic healing as well. Um, so I want you to know those things, Metatron and Susie. Okay. And uh, Bob, I, I don't know where this came from. I picked up on a the name Paul with this. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, all right. So there's another name for you. Okay. That's what, did you, uh, did I cut you off, Mark? I'm sorry. Not at all. I just want okay. to throw it out there that came into my mind. I don't know how the, uh, the whole channeling thing works, but Paul came to mind. Okay. Well, let's take it. So I want you, you know, um, you know, see if that name comes up in your meditations. Um, and, and let us know if you, if you understand that. If you don't, that's okay. It may reveal itself in time. Thank you, Mark. That's wonderful. All right. Oops, hold on. I just lost the chat here. It's flying by so fast. Uh, John Smith uh, writes, Hi, Psyche Bob. Uh, could you see which star family I'm from? Pleiadian, Reptilian, Andromedan. John, you're connected to the Pleiadian star system. Uh, you've been there several times, and I feel like you're going to get evidence of that later this year, and also particularly in 2020. Now, you know, I have to say it, Mark, you, you may not have heard me. I was talking about this the other day, but I've told everybody 2020 is going to be the phenomena year for UFO sightings all over the world. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, be watching. But you have a Palladian connection, John. I hope that helps. Thank you. Hi, Srina Shingadas is here. Good to see you. Uh, Julia Julia writes, hi, I'm 56 years old and not really happy in my work. Oops. Julia, I can't get your message back. It, it jumped. Um, maybe you can retype it. I'm sorry. There's something wrong with the chat here. And I'm having trouble holding on to the messages. All right. Well, we'll come back to that. Sorry, Julia Julia. Um, sorry about that. Um, let me jump down here. Hold on. Uh, okay. Uh, Melanie Miller. Hi, Melanie. Melanie writes, should I start my own business? And if so, in what? Oh, Melanie, that's a good question. Uh, in terms of business, I do feel you should. I, I feel you have very much a leadership gift around you. And I think that you would do well in your own business. I keep seeing some connection. I actually see two businesses around you. One is connected to tarot reading. I think you have a gift for psychic work and tarot would work wonderful for you. I also get another business that has an arts and crafts element like jewelry making or something like that. And I think that you could develop like an online store 
and create and sell our, you know, your own creations, you allow artist, artist energy around you right now as well. Okay. So there you go. Hope that helps. <laughs> okay. Care Bear says, do you see any spirits uh, or angels around me? Let me step into your energy carrier. Hold on. You know, I keep getting Archangel Raphael around you. I feel like you're doing some emotional healing. And that angel is, is guiding you right now. Okay. So that's who I want you to work with. Blessings to you. Uh, here's a good one. Um, Black Velvet Snow. Do you see any Native American connections around me? Yeah. Um, you got a um, Chief White Eagles around you. He's a very powerful guy who's going to work with you, particularly in writing uh, and psychic development. Um, I want you to research him. He was a very famous spirit that came through a number of mediums in the 1930s. Uh, white Eagles around you. Okay. You picking up any other native spirits? I saw uh, Chief Nez. Chief, what's his name? Nez. Nez, okay. So there you go. All right. You're welcome, Melanie. Hold on. I'm trying to get the, the chat. We've got so many questions. It's flying faster than I can read it. Okay. Um, hold on a second. So we got some more questions here. Uh, Macho Sancho says, Bob, can you see into my energy, please? You know, Macho Sancho, I'm getting around you uh, some dark blue light, and then I'm getting yellow. Dark blue tells me you've been in a holding pattern, maybe some struggle, a little depression. But I see healing light around you, and I feel that as we get into the beginning of November, that yellow light comes in. That's a reconnection to your higher self. So I do feel like this holding pattern breaks. And I think you've been in a holding pattern, not only in the emotional area, but in the material side of things as well. Did you want to say something or jump in? Well, it's interesting because one of the first things I saw before it came out of your mouth was the, the blue light. Um, and I, that as I am a little bit familiar with the, colors and their meanings that is a healing color so mm -hmm. yeah so they're getting healing power right so yeah they're going to be improved and i think as we get into november this will all make sense to you and you'll see the shift of the energy okay good question thank you mark see my brother's tuning in he just needs to hang out with us more doesn't he guys you know we get him here see how he, all his gifts start to come up you see he just hasn't had, had the right people to hang out with <laughs> All right. Uh, Northern Lights, which starseed origin is the most important or origin for me? I know I have two fixed stars in Regulus and Formal Halt. What am I supposed to do here? You know, that's a good question. Um, I think that one of the things that you want to oh, – hold on a second. My thing's going off here. One of the things that – I would say to you that you are being called to be a communicator. Uh, you're going to be a communicator between this world and the coming alien revelation. See, a lot of people, and you're one of the Northern Lights, is starting to wake up that you have connections that go back to star systems. And um, it's not so much whether, you know, it's, it's you know, most important about the origins, the fact that you be open to the communication, you know. Um, the truth is almost every earth person is connected to the Palladians on some level. Some are more directly connected like yourself, which means that you have an ongoing link with them. But I want you to be open to channeling and receiving their messages, okay? All right, good questions. Angela Locke, all the way from England. Hi, Bob. Do you have any messages from the spirit world for me, please? You know, Angela, I keep picking up Pablo Picasso around you. <laughs> this sounds great. Yeah, famous people can come through. Um, this is your time to create, to create beauty. This is your time to design the life that you want. 
And he's literally giving me a canvas in which he says, tell her to paint her new life. I feel 2020 for you is really the year of new beginning. And I see a move coming for you. It looks like you're relocating to Spain uh, in the spring. And I feel like that's getting underway relatively soon. So there's a lot of changes coming for you. Um, and I see more finances as well. I think you're going to work more independently, work from home rather than travel to an office. So develop your home kind of structure that you can work from home. Okay. Um, anyways, I hope that makes some sense to you. Do you get anything for her, Mark? That I have to apologize. I didn't uh, pick up on anything on that one. It's right. interesting because... This sort of gets like it comes and goes. I'll see something and then I don't, you know, it's, I'm new to this. So. That's all right. You're doing great. Guys, isn't Mark doing really well? I'm telling you, we're so fortunate to have him here. All right. Uh, Stoljan Stizelikov. I know I never say your name right. From Macedonia. Writes, hey, Bob, when will I have my spiritual awakening? What do you mean when? It's already happening. You're already having your awakening. Now, I know it's not as grand and glorious as you thought it would be, but spiritual awakening actually sometimes comes very subtly. And I feel like particularly this last six months for you has been a time of immense growth. And um, do you see that one, Mark, at the bottom, Stojan? Actually, I'm a little, the chat's, I'm up a little higher. Stojan asked that. And... Um, I feel like you're already starting. Uh, I think in 2020, you're going to see uh, more growth. Um, I feel particular. I want you to watch your dreams because I get the sense of spirit is working through that now to help bring you visions of things. So definitely watch your dreams. Keep a dream journal and do all of that. Okay. Hello, Rebecca. I see a few hellos coming in. So if I miss you, I apologize. But if I do see them, I will say hello. And I do want to apologize. Sometimes this chat goes so fast and I miss stuff. I'm not trying to ignore anybody. But, you know, we get more questions sometimes than we can get in. So I'm doing what I can. If I don't answer your question, please don't hate me. You know, it's only one of me. And we do what we can, you know. But we'll be back, you know, on Tuesday. We have messages from the spirit world on Tuesday. And we'll be doing more of these readings, you know. So Jay Whippet writes, uh, I love Raphael. Always watch in pictures where they put the fish. He's always pictured with the fish. Yes, Raphael always carries a fish, and that's a sign of healing power and friendship. Uh, so, yes, wonderful. Okay. Uh, here's a question, Mark. I'm going to field this to my brother, make him do some work today. Pam uh -oh. Erard writes, what should I be focusing on right now? Pam Erard, just step into her energy there. Um, this sounds really weird, but I would say uh, focusing on the yard. Okay. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> All right. But she probably is looking for something a little more deep than that. Um, focusing on um, focusing on Focusing in on the positive in your life, I would say, not the negative. Uh, let the negative go and focus more on the positive energy um, working for you. That's wonderful. Yes. And you know, Mark, it's interesting you said about the yard because yard imagery often means self-care and self-nourishment, tending to the self. So I think you're absolutely right on that. Pam, I also feel like for you that you're at a crossroads here in the emotional area, that love is going to be an issue for you in a new beginning in that area. And I think that after we're into around March of 2020, um, I feel like the relationship energy is much stronger around you. But for right now, it's like Mark said, tend to your yard, meaning tend to yourself, nurture yourself, love yourself, be on the positive, And then you'll see that that whole relationship energy really turns around for you in 2020. Blessings to you. Thanks for your questions. All right. Oh, my goodness. We got so many. I can't get through all the questions. They're flying faster. I can see. 
Um, okay. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, Simon Omar. Hey, Psyche Bob, when you scry and go into your mirror, is that astral projection? Um, Omar, that um, that's a good question. It's scrying, I think, does have an element of astral projection to it. And so um, I do think that you can literally transcend your body and dimensions through the, the scrying mirror. And so, yes, I'd say there's an element, though I wouldn't call it full-on astral projection, at least in my case, because when I'm looking into my black mirror, I'm still aware of being in my physical body to a degree, though I kind of transcend dimension. So I think it's a bit of that, but not the full-on thing. Hope that helps. <laughs> okay. Uh, T. Rose Lover writes, wow, psychic brothers. That's all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Xeroxen13, any messages for me? You know, Xeroxen, uh, I'm getting a lot of music around you. I feel that you have an artist theme developing, and I really want you to be open to your creativity now. I see you doing stuff with performance, with theater, with music, writing music, writing poetry, anything creative. That's where you want to put your energy. You've got a lot of power for that. Okay. All right. There you go. Did you want to add anything, Mark, to that? No, I think you're right on the Okay, he's in agreement. See, you got two of us now agreeing, all right? Andrew's, Andrew Harper, who's guiding me, Bob? Um, you're under the protection of a, of a spirit guide um, who's actually like an ascended master. He was actually an Atlantean master. And the name that I keep picking up around this, it sounds like, um, like Erickson, like the name's like Erickson, but it's not Erickson, it's like, Eric Zanian, Eric Zahn, Erickson, Eric Zahn, that's the word. I'm trying to get it. It's hard to channel that through. Eric Zahn, he was an Atlantean ascended master. That's who's one of your guides. And he's working with you to help you discover some of your past life stuff. I see you opening to being aware of that connection. You've had past lives in Atlantis. So, yeah, yeah, that's one of your guides. Okay, thank you. Um all right. Um, hold on. Let me jump down here. Uh, Nessie Anderson, is there anything you can see about my purpose here in life? Thank you. You know, Nessie, mm -hmm. I got to tell you, I think you're meant to be um, a spiritual worker. I see healing power coming out of you. I see psychic power coming out of you. And I think that you're an old soul and you're here to teach people what it's really all about. See, you know, a lot of people are running around all enmeshed in materialism and they're missing the spirit. You're here to talk about the spirit. So you should be doing this work as well. You really should. All right. Oh, here's a good question. I have an edge. Uh, Bob, do you have a spell for attracting a new home? You know, that's a wonderful thing. You know, when you want to work with home energy, I have used this, and I tell you it works. Pray to St. Joseph. Get a yellow candle or a brown candle, or you can have yellow and brown candles. If you can't get either of those, get a white candle. But traditionally, St. Joseph's a yellow candle or a brown candle, uh, or purple. Yellow, brown, or purple is his colors. And you light that and you say a prayer and ask St. Joseph to lead you to your home. So he'll get you secure in your home. Okay. So he's going to, he's going to help you. But uh, I do see you getting a home. I feel after the new years where you'll have the breakthrough, but start that prayer now. And if you can get a little picture of him, print it out on the internet, put it by the candle. You talk to him because I'm telling you the saints will help you. They're spirit guides. You know, sometimes people say, well, Bob, why do you pray the saints? You're not Catholic. I said, well, I used to be Catholic. And I said, I pray the saints because they're spirit guides. Just because I became a spiritual doesn't mean I don't believe in the saints. They're wonderful helps, you know. Anything you want to say on that, Mark? Um, no, I'm just, I was <laughs> listening to you. Okay. All right, there you go. My thoughts. All right, good. All right, um. Oops, hold on. Guys, I'm sorry. These are, I can't get them past when they go by. I'm not trying to ignore you. 
Um, hold on just a second. Uh, Aqua Goddess Women, can I get a reading, please? What do my spirit guides want to tell me about legal cases that I'm involved in? Um, I'm sorry, your message, I didn't get to see the last part, but I'll tell you, um, there's the word delay, okay? And I'm going to have to ask you practice patience because I think that you'll win this, but the thing is, it's going to be a little longer timing that you want. Uh, I see this being delayed to around the springtime, February, March of 2020. But if you can hang in there and remember, you know, you just tell the truth. Don't don't fudge. Don't lie. Don't try to get revenge. You tell the truth, the case will turn in your favor. But it's going to be delayed to about February or March. Okay. So there you go. All right. Moonchild, my 36-year-old son, Matthew, tragically passed away on July 20th. Any messages for me? Moonchild, I got to tell you, um, I generally can't get people in for about six months. Um, so I'm, I probably can't get him through right now. I got to be honest with you. If he comes through a little later, I'll let you know, but I'm just not getting anybody around you. right Now, that doesn't mean he's not with you. It just means I'm not getting it. Okay, because it takes them a while to build up their connection. So I got to be honest with you, I'm just not picking it up at the moment. Okay, I'll ask Fletcher if he can help with that. Maybe a little later we'll get something, but I'm not getting it at the moment. You know, as a medium, I've always told you I'm very honest. If I can get it, I do. And if I can't, I can't. And I, I never lie about it. Okay, but I can tell you he did make it to the light. That I do know. Fletcher said he's safe. So we know he's on the other side. Okay. Uh, here's a question for you, Mark. Mark, what star system do I come from? Bonnie Daly wants oh to know. Oh, my gosh. Um, I, I have to be truthful about this. I do not know the star systems. I okay. just, I, I, I apologize. Um, I wish I could answer that, project on that. I don't know what star system I come from. So. <laughs> That's all right. I just thought I'd throw it at you. Bobby, maybe you could. Yeah, she's connected the Pleiades. Okay. There are a lot of Pleiadians here today. Uh, I want you to go look up Pleiades star system. They're beautiful. Just do an image search. It's so beautiful. That's where you're from. Huh? Okay. Blessings to you. Pam Erard said, thank you so much for our help. You're welcome, Pam. Blessings to you. She liked your reading, Mark. All right. Shadowlander, Bob, will my hair regrow to its fullest in the next few years? I've got hair loss from being on birth control for four years. Uh, it will. I feel like you're a body. Um, I have to be honest. I feel that that birth control was a uh, toxic for you. You're more sensitive than drugs than most people. And I do feel it will come back. I don't think you had permanent damage. It was more of a temporary thing. In fact, next year, I think you're going to start to see some improvement. Uh, be careful with medicines. You're more sensitive to it than most people. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Christian Druid, 1313 Clifton. Any messages from spirit for me? Hi, Christian Druid. Good to see you. Um, you know, I keep getting literally um, the Mer wizard, a wizard, Merlin. It's literally Merlin. He's an ascended master, Merlin of King Arthur. He's a real spirit guide. Uh, he's around you right now. And I get the sense here that you're going to be doing um, greater psychic development. He's coming to help you with magic skills as well as with, um, you know, psychic development. The Merlin surrounds you. Okay. There you go. All right. Gav Hines. Hey, Gav. Good to see you. Um, what does my aura say today? You know, Gav, I'm getting around you a lot of blue and purple light, beautiful blue and purple. It's a rich fiber blue, which means that the spirit is raising your connection to itself. Purple means you're mastering magic. I think it's a very good time for you to be doing ritual work, magic work. Um, I think you have a real connection there, and it's going to get stronger. You're in a good channeling energy right now. All right. Uh, May J. Duque, 
And forgive me if I'm hacking. It says, Bob and Mark, would you both please step into my aura? Thank you. All right, Meiji Duque. Um, you know, I'm getting yellow all around you, beautiful yellow light. This means that you're a place of learning right now. And there may come up some issue here connected to education or going back in some sort of training or schooling. So I want you to be open to advancement now through education. That's a, that's a real strong energy around you. Do you pick up anything around Duque's Aramar? Well, um, you said yellow. I was uh, I was picking up green. I'm not sure what what that is. But. Oh, that's good. Um, green is can indicate um, healing, physical vitality, energy of healing, and also can mean new beginnings in life. So it's kind of both of those. So that's very good. And and I think Mark's right on that because as I go beyond the yellow, I do pick that up as well. So. This learning, this time of process takes you into a really new beginning. Okay. Wonderful. I hope that helps. Blessings. All right. Um, okay. Uh, uh, I have a Neje says, thank you for the, the St. Joseph advice. Okay, good. Um, hold on a see. I can't see the questions here. Hold on. They're moving too fast. Uh, Maria H. Psych Bob, anything of importance that I need to know? Oops, it just went by. I don't know why we can't go backwards in the chat, but anyways. Uh, Maria H., I have to tell you, I feel like right now what you've really got to focus on is the messages you're getting. I feel like you're already getting messages from Spirit. I feel like they give stuff every day. But you know, the thing is, sometimes you rush around, you're not listening. So I want you to make slowing everything down and doing meditation, your focus, because that's how spirit works. Once you sit down, you connect, then you move forward in life. So when you're hitting blocks, some of that is because you're getting the answer, but you're missing it because you're not slowing down. Okay. And I don't say that to be critical, That's, but that will help you. Okay. Anyway, blessings to you. All right. Joey McD, question, any messages from my dad? Thanks. Let me see if I can step into his frequency, Joey. Hold on just a second. Okay. I hear his voice. I've got him. Fletcher's brought him. Thank you, Fletcher. My spirit guy connected me to your dad. Uh, your dad's back here. He said to tell everybody, he said, I'm not hurt. Because I get the sense at the time of his crossing, it was kind of tragic, and he was pretty messed up. He said, I'm not hurt. I'm out of the body. I'm fine. He wants you to know that he's in the light. He's been around you, and there's another member of the family. I think you have a brother or maybe a sister. I'm getting siblings here also. That He said, I visited all the kids. So he's been around you and some other family members recently. And he says that he's literally um, talking to you. Now, you might start to hear his voice and think, oh, I heard something. That's him talking. Uh, but he's around you. He said he's very proud of you. He said you've done well since my passing. So he wants to acknowledge you've been a strength in the family is what he's telling me. And so I do see uh, him guiding and blessing and helping you. You don't have to be afraid. He's doing just fine. He really wants me to emphasize that he is not suffering. Okay, I hope that makes some sense to you. Mark, you picking up that spirit? You get anything on that? Um. I don't think I have that ability yet. That's, okay, it. that's all right. Sometimes yeah. it's funny when you're sitting with the psyche, it will start to happen, though. You, know? sure. you might get some of that. So, anyways, I hope that helps. Blessings to you. All right, let's get down here. Uh, hold on. I'll get down to the chat here. Um, let's see here. Lynn, oh, Lindsay Limbury just got. Hi, Lindsay. Good to see you. Welcome. Uh, Gabby, 3672, says, what colors do you see in my aura? Um, colors of my aura slash energy. Gabby, let me just get closer in your frequency here. Um, I'm getting gold and silver. 
Isn't that wonderful? Silver and gold. Remember that old Christmas? Silver and gold. Anyways, I can't say. But um, you've got silver and gold. That means prosperity is coming for you. And it also means leadership advancement. So I want you to watch. I think that by December, you're feeling a lot more confident in the money area and the career area. And those colors are, are leading you right now. Okay. Hope that helps. Blessings to you. All right. Hold on a second. It's flying by, guys. I'm not trying to ignore people. I just, it's hard for me to see all of this, okay? All right. Um, Raven Moth, any messages from spirits around me? Are angels using my fridge as a portal? <laughs> well, Raven Moth, I have to tell you, the angels aren't particularly interested in eating our food. Um but you know what's interesting is why you may be perceiving that is I do feel that your home that you're living in is on an area where there's a lot of um, what I call psychokinetic activity. Um, under the ground, under where your property is, I pick up water that's running. And I feel like your kitchen area, actually, you might start to hear voices. It's not that they're coming out of the fridge, but I literally think your property is situated over kind of a, um, a vortex area, like a ley line. And I've encountered this before. I've been to properties that, that literally sit over these vortexes. And a lot of amazing things will happen. People have apparitions. They hear voices. And uh, I do think that it's actually a physical energy that's being generated by the land where your home is sitting. And that's why you're saying, are they coming out of my fridge? It's because that part of the house is over that area. Uh, so they're not actually coming from the refrigerator, but they are in that area under the ground. That's where it opens up a portal. So yes. Okay. Uh, in terms of messages, I keep feeling like you're getting right now some earthbound souls that are being drawn to you. And I feel that the spirit world is letting them come to you because you're going to learn to help them cross to the light. And so you're going to be doing what we call spirit rescue work over this next year. And you're actually at a great place because it's a nexus of psychic energy where you'll be able to really raise power to move them on, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's what I get around to, okay? Archangel Gabriel is working with you as well, okay? <clears throat> and you know, Mark, in New Mexico, there's a lot of vortexes out there, isn't there? There are, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So anyways, all right, we're going to just take a few more questions and then we're going to wrap it up tonight, guys. Okay. Cause it's like about to work it all week. You know, I'm a little tired. So um, Colleen Troy, please. Can you tell me anything about my life purpose? Thank you. You know, Colleen, you've got a lot of, um, orange light around you. You have a lot of creative power. You have artist energy. I'm also getting purple light, which means psychic energy. You're a natural channel. Um, I feel like you have a connection with the, with the aliens as well. And I think that you should explore um, channeling and particularly channeling messages from those who are connecting with the earth. Uh, I feel like that's going to be a big part of this uh, transition year for you. 2020 is a transition year where you step into really embracing those spiritual gifts and that connection. Okay. Anyways, hope that helps. Blessings to you. Uh, all right. Let's go on down here. Um, hold on. Sonia Testerman. Um, what group of aliens are taking me? You know, Sonia, it's interesting you ask that because I, I think I told you before I felt that you were being visited. Um, I am picking up around you the gray aliens. But let me just say these are the tall gray aliens. There's two types. There's tall and the short. The tall grays are very enlightened. And I believe that they have visited with you to help implant messages related to the future evolution of Earth. And, you know, don't let anybody tell you you're crazy. You're not crazy. You are actually getting visited and you are going aboard their ship. Now, you've had two types of visitations 
Uh, one has been in your astral body. Like at night, you're going in your dreams, but you're not actually just dreaming. You're actually spiritually going to connect with them. I also do believe you've had actual physical abduction as well for the sake of connection with them. So that does occur on both levels, uh, but it's the gray, tall gray aliens, okay? They're different than the short grays. All right. I hope that helps, dear. Let me know what's happening. Um, I have to ask you, Sonia, have you had an issue with an implant? Because I keep getting like in one of the shoulder areas that they may have put an implant in you. Um, so let me know if you've had anything that looks like an implant. Sometimes you'll get little scoop marks on your arms or legs. And that's usually a sign of skin samples. And usually near there, there'll also be like an implant, like a little microchip of some sort. So the, the aliens are the tall grays. Okay. Okay. Yay, Selena Sorens is here. Hi, Selena. Good to see you. Okay. Um, Robbie Saloom. Hey, Bob, do you see anything for the near future for me? Thank you. You know, Robbie, I got to tell you, I feel like um, this is how weird. I feel like there's a move coming, like a physical move, as if there may be a housing change. Um, and I feel like you're at a crossroads where you're really ready to kind of step out more on your own. I feel like this last year you've been feeling restless. And I want you to watch because I get a sense of a physical move. I think by December this will make more sense sense to you, but I feel at that time there comes up opportunity to actually look at another home and do a physical move. And so I want you to be ready for that, okay? Because I think it's ready, you're ready to move on. Do you see anything you want to add to that, Mark? Uh, mountains came to my mind. I'm not sure what that means if the move is going to be to the mountains or away from the mountains. So I just, mountains. Okay. Well, let us know, um, if that makes sense to you. Thank you so much. Good question. Good job, Mark. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. Let's just take a few more and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Uh, hold on up. So it just went by. Uh, Mark Rita Red says, any suggestions to help with my career? You know, Mark Rita, I think you need to be in a much more creative career. I feel you have a connection coming to the to um, fashion or retail industry. I feel like you have a uh, you could design clothes, you could design displays, organize runway shows. Does that make sense to you, Mark? You get anything like that? That's uh, absolutely fascinating. Um, somebody asked earlier if we had a psychic connection. Um, before you even started talking, as you were reading that, I saw clothes, I saw pantsuits. It, that, that was really interesting. There you go. See my bros getting it, see? Yeah, so Marguerite, now you got two confirmations. There you go. You're going to rock it, okay? All right. Um, all right, hold on a second. Let's see. It's, okay, we're going to do one more here before we close up, okay? Um Hold on a second. Christine C. Uh, did I answer her question already? This looks familiar. All right. Bob, where should I uh, focus my attention career-wise and make the most money? What resonates best with me? You know, Christine, I think you have a real gift for consulting. Um, I think you're a nat natural politics too, but I think right now you do very well to devise to consult people, particularly connected to political careers. I think that will be very successful for you and money wise for the moment. Okay. All right. There you go. Um, well, guys, listen, I could go on here for six more hours. And I love being here with you, but you know, it's getting late here and I have so enjoyed you know, getting to spend some time with you. And I'm so thankful. Mark, thank you for being here today. Bobby, it's been a true honor. And thank you for having me on your show. And thank you for everybody out there. Who's, um, your fantastic comments. And like Bobby, I do apologize if, uh, if questions came in and I didn't get a chance to answer them. Uh, these things, you were right, Bobby. These things fly by and it's, it's amazing. And it's on screen in one, one second and off the screen in another. 
So yeah, I said, so please the out there, because I, I sometimes after these shows get hate mail. And people say, you didn't answer my question. Guys, I, I really physically can't get every question. I do the best I can. And we, first of all, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for your patience. And if you didn't get your question answered, you know, we're going to do this again. You know, I'm always on here. On Tuesday, we'll have messages on the spirit world. So you'll get another chance. Um, you know, but if you're somebody watching, you know, and you have something that's really urgent and you need help, you might want to think about investing in a private reading with me. Now, you know, my private readings are a lot more in depth than what you get here because it's a full hour, you and me one-on-one, -on -one, and we hash it out. You know, a lot of you have been said, gee, I'd love an hour. Sit down with Psychic Bob privately. Well, that's what my readings are for. We'll go through everything, past, present, future, spirit guides, messages from deceased loved ones. We look at your past lives, your karmic links. You know, we talk about your life mission, all of that. And I answer all your questions. So you get a lot in an hour with me. You know, if you got psych about talking nonstop for an hour, and Mark, you know, I can talk. I've done readings for Mark before and I cover a lot. Oh, of yeah, absolutely. And a uh, friend of mine, I, I remember one time in particular, I don't know if you remember this, um, Bobby, but it was a few years back. Um, I had a friend at the house and I don't remember, I think something tragic had happened in her life. She had either lost a sister, or, I don't remember, but I remember um, I actually came in the bedroom so that you could, she could talk to Bobby on the phone and um, she started crying. I don't know what you said to her. Um, I remember that, yes. But, I did connect her with a sibling. I believe it was a family sister. That that was, was. I, I just remember I walked out there and, she told me, I don't believe what your brother just told me. It was. Yeah. And you hadn't told me anything. You just said, I got a friend who needs help. And I said, I don't tell me anything. I do better work that way. And I nailed it. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for, I forgot about it. It's been a few years ago, but yes, you know, see a private reading, you get my full undivided attention and I can go a lot more in depth. So if you want to get on my schedule for a private reading, please call because I'm already filling up for the month of October. Uh, we'll get you in, but it may be a week or two till you have to wait. But if you say, oh, I'll wait till it's less busy, it's just going to be booked up further ahead. So if you want to get in, you need to call soon. So give me a call at my office number, uh, which will be in the link below this video once it processes. But put this in your cell phone. So you can get yourself a book, Psyche Bob, in your, num your number. 703-825-3929 is my office number. Put that in your cell phone, save it. Even if you don't want to buy a reading day, just have it. Because when you do, you'll say, oh, I got psychic bio. I'm glad I got that number. And give me a call, 703-825-3929. You can also write to me at my official email, psychicbobhickman at gmail.com. Those links will both be below in the info box. Also, visit my website. A lot of you have just tuned in. You don't know a lot about me. You can learn about my work as a psychic uh, at psychicbob.com and in fact right here below you see in the box there that's my website psychicbob.com below my finger there okay so go there and you know reach out to me see what i do learn about my work also while you're there oh, hold on let me get a, ah, i forgot to put these up on my table i'm also a published author so you can at my bookstore my website buy my books Messages from Rose. It's about my early days as a psychic. It's an autobiography. We've got Psyche Bob's Book of Spells over there for those of you who love a little magic. We got Ouija Mysteries, the Spirit Board Seances, and oops, what's a few more. One of the other ones here. Uh, Psyche Bob's Book of Wicked Wisdom. All of these are available at psychicbob.com. So, you know, if you want to work on your spiritual life, you want to pick up some books. You know, Mark's read all my books and he likes them. You like my books, Mark? Of course. Uh, they're, uh, they're uh, absolutely. When you talk about Rose and your spirit guides and Fletcher, it's some amazing work. Yeah. So see, it'll help you on your journey. A lot of you have been saying, I want to get on my spiritual path. How do I do it? Study my books. You'll learn about how to embrace that reality and that the spirit world is not scary. It's part of who we are. It's, you know, it's as natural as talking to you and me talking. We just talk to the spirit world. 
So let them help you. You know, I always say, if you're at a time of struggle in your life, don't give in to despair because the spirit world is here to bless us and help us. So call on them, okay? And call on me. I'm glad to help you get on the path. And, you know, um, I just, Mark, I got to tell you, thank you so much for being here today. It's made it a really fun time. And I think everybody's had a good time. Haven't you guys? Y'all had a good time? And once again, if I may, thank you, Bobby, for having me on. Thank you for all of your followers and uh, the great comments. And just thank you. Well, thank you. This has been awesome. Well, guys, listen, keep it here at Spirit Channel. Please help me out. Once this video processes, go back, give it thumbs up, like it, favorite it, share it with your friends, post it on your Facebook. Let people know about the work we do here at Spirit Channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you get updates. Um, and here at Spirit Channel, especially for the new people, we have something every single day I put out something. So tomorrow is going to be, what's tomorrow? Monday, right? It's Monday. Woo. It's, uh, yes. I don't know where the time is. But anyways, it's Monday. And that means it's astrology forecast day. So be back here tomorrow. We're going to take a look at what is in the stars for you. I'm going to give you my latest astrology report. You won't get it anywhere else. This is my own interpretation of the star charts. So make sure to be here tomorrow. We're going to cover everything for all 12 zodiac signs and what is coming for the next week. So you want to get your calendar with you and make notes while you watch that. And you'll know what the major energies are of each day. We're going to go day by day for the next seven days. So you have the, the edge to get through your week. So make sure to be here for that. So we'll have that posted tomorrow, okay? And be back here. Guys, thanks for being here. I love you. I send blessings to all of you. Mark, thank you again for being oh. here. Well, you know everybody's excited. So you think you might come back and see us again, Mark? I would be honored to. Absolutely. All right. There we go. All right. Well, we're going to make it happen. Guys, thanks for being here. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And until then, may all of you always blessed be.